Welcome everybody to our July, <laughs> welcome to our July 20th, 2022 Board of Douglas County Commissioners 530 business meeting. I want to welcome those of you who are with us at the old courthouse and folks joining us on Zoom. Um, I, I do have some instructions for public comment to get us started. Before I read through those, um, just want to briefly address that last week's me actually I'm sorry it was two weeks ago now um, which would have been the date is escaping me July 6th I believe um, our meeting had been uploaded our recorded meeting had been uploaded onto YouTube um, and was removed by YouTube for violation of their content policies um, by the next day we it is now available again um, after our staff went through an appeal process and communicated further with YouTube. Um, but just wanted to put that on the record um, and note that we've updated our comments uh, our instructions for general public comment a bit about that and also just want to give space if either commissioners have any um, thing to add to that or any any details that I may have missed from pre discussions with staff okay. So um, I will just offer some instructions for public comment before we kick off our meeting. Each action item on the agenda will offer an opportunity for relevant public comment about that topic. We ask that you wait until the agenda item that you're here for comes up for discussion. Additionally, near the start of our meeting, we will invite folks to provide general public comment to the commission, which is a time for addressing issues not on today's agenda, but related to general county business. I was making sure that we didn't have any issues with the, it does look like we're recording, sorry. The box distracted me for a moment. Sorry for the interruption. I just wanna make sure we were still recording. <clears throat> uh, all public comments should be directed to the county commission. The public should also know that comments received by the commission during our meetings do not represent the views of Douglas County government. And if deemed to be necessary in the future, we may direct staff to not record public comments out of concern for YouTube's content policies. The goal being that all meetings remain as accessible as, po as possible to our public. We will first call on folks who are here in person um, and that have signed up for a general public comment. Then we will turn to any online commenters who are with us tonight. If you are on Zoom tonight, please plan to use the raise your hand function when the time comes and listen for staff to call your name. All comments will be limited to three minutes, and we ask everyone to give their full name and Douglas County residents for our meeting minutes. We also reserve the right to mute and remove any speaker who is vulgar, rude, or inappropriate. If visual aids are used during the meeting, the presenter will share their screen. Please know that online participants will not be able to view them without a computer, smartphone, or tablet during tonight's meeting. However, materials are published online for your reference also. Lastly, a recording of this meeting will be available on our YouTube page and website. With, <clears throat> we're gonna get started with our meeting. Please do not disrupt our meeting. You will have your opportunity for public comment in a moment. <clears throat> First, uh, we have our consent agenda. Do, does either commissioner wish to pull anything for further discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask if the public wishes to pull anything from the consent agenda. Anybody with a raised hand online, Jill? Okay, go ahead and bring that back for a motion. This is Commissioner Portia. I move to approve the consent agenda items 1.1 through 1.3. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. With that, we'll go ahead and move into general public comment. I have five folks signed up tonight. I will call on them first, see if anybody else has joined us in person, and then move online. <clears throat> Justin, you're first. My name is Dr. Justin Spies. I'm running for uh, county commissioner here in District 1 as a Republican. Seats currently, currently held there by Patrick Kelly. Uh, today, the Lawrence Times uh, ran an article, uh, their editor, Mackenzie Clark, is in this meeting right now, ran an article about Commissioner Shannon Portillo here, along with City Commissioner Amber Sellers and uh, school uh, USD 497 School District President Shannon Kimball. And the main takeaway, go read that article, the main takeaway from that is the slight, and it's what I've been saying since I started protesting last year, the slightest bit of resistance 
and they'll jump ship. They don't like it. They, they start running. So first they started uh, censoring us. So, uh, you know, 90 day ban over there at the school district got thrown out of here multiple times, keep the pressure on them. They start to jump ship. So uh, I've, I've come in here and talked about how we got three of them scalps already. We got uh, Shannon Portillo. We got uh, Superintendent Anthony Lewis. We got uh, uh, the health director, Marcelino. And then also, uh, I wasn't going to do this, but, you know, Steve Jacob, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, we'll take Andrew Nussbaum, too. So he, here's another one. These people are jumping ship. They have these obligations, commitments to their community, and they jump ship. So what we have to do is when we put pressure on them, they, they jump ship. We got to fill the void. We got to fill the void. So what does that mean? So Andrew Nussbaum resigning on the school board, there's a void there. So uh, if you're tired of the bullshit, like I am, and, and a lot of us are, fill the void, step up, takes courage. I get that it takes courage, but above all, you got to lose your defeatist attitude. You can't go into it thinking I'll never get, I'll never get selected. You know, the school board, uh, I, I believe is being filled by an application process. So I think those lefty school board members are gonna be able to vote, but don't, don't let that stop you. Start running. Get your name out there. Use your platform and stand up for something. You never know what you'll build. If you don't, then I'll, we only have ourselves to blame if they keep bringing in these lefties. And they will. Everyone looks around. They think about uh, the nature part going under, the, the, the crisis at the school district. It's like, hey, why do you keep voting for these people, man? Look, Shannon Portillo has no values whatsoever. She jumps to, uh, less than two, two years in. Why do you keep voting for them? What, what I represent, me and my side, we are not the, the bad guys in this. It's these people that are making your lives worse than they should by stepping into it. And so in that article, they paint them as victims. Like, we're only going after them because they're women or their skin color. No, no, no. We go after every single one of you that jumped into our lives and was micromanaging. It is not about your skin color. It is not about your gender. It's not about who you sleep with. It's if you start messing with our lives. That's when we're going to have a problem. And until you start to figure out that it's the policies instead of the way you look and the way you think about gender and all that stuff, it is the policies you're putting in place that we're attacking. We're not attacking you and as, as uh, Nazis, as you claim. Time's up. Sue, you're next. Hi, my name is Sue Herrick. I live here in Lawrence. And I wanted to bring some observations made while protesting at the clinics being held to vax children and infants. There's a group of us that stand nearby with signs stating facts, not opinions. Parents who see our signs are so mo motivated by fear that most of them avoid and ignore us. They park far away, they don't look at us. The media and the three-letter agencies have thoroughly put them in a state of fear. These facts can't reach these people. A child is more likely to be killed by lightning than by COVID. The chance of a child diving, dying from COVID is less than one in a million. The VAX is experimental. Outcomes long-term are unknown. Every animal used to develop these shots died as a result. Myocarditis is occurring in children at an alarming rate post-vaccination. The companies producing these so-called vaccines are not liable for the damages or the adverse reactions or the deaths resulting. Adults consenting for themselves to this gene therapy experiment is one thing. Using this on children should not be an option. I'm demanding that you put a stop to it here in Douglas County, however you can find a way. The clinics are being scheduled from uh, here on from uh, July 23rd through July 30th at the Health Department, East Lawrence Rec Center, West Middle School, Eudora Middle School, and the Health Department. Please protect our children. Stop these clinics. And on another note, <clears throat> today in the Lawrence Times, Shannon Portillo was quoted. The topic was threats and polarization for public servants. Here's the quote or part of it. Individuals who read this article will repeat the same racial and gendered criticisms that I've received since I announced my candidacy. I'd like to know what linguistic culinary school did you attend, Shannon? All three of you that were quoted in this article must have attended the same one. The word salads you and the two other women quoted are making are amazing. 
pushback is what makes our constitutional republic strong. Calling pushback a threat is hyperbole. This is a victim's mentality, not the mentality of a leader. Having attended most of the meetings here, I know the threat level is non-existent. Hyperbole seems to be the seasoning for your word salads. I look forward to Dr. Spee's election to this board for the courage and leadership he'll bring. Thank you. Joe. My name is Joe Herrick, and I hope to show you why betting on the government narrative is the dumbest decision you can make. Drinking government Kool-Aid is not a good strategy. Amendment one of the Constitution, freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people to peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for re redress of grievances. That's why we're here, grievances. The COVID-19 shots are the most dangerous biologic ever released on the human population. This has been and continues to be the largest biological experiment in human history. We are the guinea pigs. This is experimental. Data rather than dogma indicate that these shots should have been taken off the market in January and February of 2021 because of excess death loss and adverse events. Article one, section one, the power to make law, modify law or appeal law only belongs to the legislative departments of government. Therefore, mandates have no power of law because it's illegal for the legislature to give power to any other branch, even the federal government. In Marbury versus Madison, 1803, it was a su Supreme Court case where the federal government uh, was shut down by the Supreme Court because their law that they tried to pass was against the constitution. And here we have city and county commissioners with and public health officials with mandates that are not lost and you shouldn't abide by them. Amendment 14, section one, all persons born or naturalized in the United States are subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any person within the jurisdiction the equal protection of laws. What's that mean? We can't have pity parties because we are all equal. It doesn't matter your race, your color, whether you're right or left, vaxxed or unvaxxed. You have to use your own discernment. Freedom does not exist if you don't use it. Thank you. Dan, Katie. Dan. Thank you for letting me talk. My name is Dan Katie and I live in Lawrence, Kansas. I'm no doctor but I can read data. I can look at data and, and make, make assumptions based on that. Uh, there's been some talk about the, uh, the vaccines. Um, this just came out of Germany. A study just came out. One out of every 5,000 people had an adverse effect in Germany to the, to the vaccine, which is not really that vaccine. When it was rolled out, CDC put on their site, if you get vaccinated, you will not be able to get the, get the coronavirus, COVID-19. You would not transmit it. As everybody in this room knows, that was a lie. So any restrictions that were put on based on that and mandates 
are, are criminal. The mask mandates, uh, let me get into that. Um, Hawaii, in October last year, after 450 days of mask mandates, strict mask mandates, they had the highest cases they've ever had. Vermont the same. New York, New York, New York City, in December, had the highest number of cases ever after strict mandates on masks and strict vaccination mandates. You couldn't go anywhere without, without being vaccinated. Um, extreme government overreach. And, and I would hope that you would listen to that and if you want, if you want to look at this information up, you can find it. Even though a lot of it has been uh, has been uh, censored. And if and if you had mask mandates here, vaccine mandates, it's 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 criminal. It doesn't work. Uh, Scotland, over ninety nine percent of the people dying in Scotland from COVID. Double, double vaxxed. Also, uh, for those that are considering boosters, the latest information out of Germany also is that additional boosters are decreasing your immunity. So you might think about it. Thank you. Amy. Good evening, my name is Amy Boffman. I am a Douglas County resident. Um, I wanted to not disappoint Shannon since she, Shannon Portillo, um, you knew that you would get flat, um, some flack for your comment. So um, I just wanna let you know that um, saying stuff like that is just like stuff that we keep hearing about people on the right and patriots, you know, we're violent. We're tired of hearing that because it's not true. It's not true at all. We're the first ones that really follow the rules. Okay, we don't set fires. We're not Antifa. That's lefty stuff. So saying stuff like that is wrong and it's a lie. Maybe you've been threatened. I don't know. But for the most part, the stuff I'm hearing about the right and the patriots, and I even see it on TV, like when you watch, you know, like SWAT and stuff, they're painting patriots to be bad and they're intentionally doing it. It's not right because we're good people. We're the first ones that want to follow the 10 commandments. Okay. Also, thank you for making sure the YouTube video got put back up. We appreciate that. That's censoring speech and that shouldn't happen. Like he said, they're scrubbing stuff off of the internet like crazy and it's important information. Okay, everybody needs to be allowed to see the information and decide for themselves what's true and what's not and do their own research. Thank you. Is there anybody else here for general public comment in the building? Go ahead. My name is Michael Lawrence Countability. My concern, and I'm, I'm not a part of, of, I don't know how to say this. You guys lump me in, and I don't want to be lumped in. I have a problem with the YouTube judging what our First Amendment can do. Because what we're allowing is a public company to dictate to government what's acceptable. And that cannot happen. Regardless of what YouTube's policies are, the First Amendment prevails. The public forum doctrine prevails. And I apologize that YouTube caused some issues for you guys. I'm a YouTuber as well. They cause issues for me all the time. Almost all of my videos get demonetized and I have to petition to get them remonetized. I think somebody around here has got a flag on me or something. But in any case, you can't let YouTube dictate the First Amendment. That, that is a priority. And I'm going to take three minutes to drive this point home. When you allow 
private companies to start dictating what the First Amendment is allowed to do, you end up with corporate overtake. And that's what we've seen in this country. I'm going to go in another little direction. And what you're about to see, you guys are going to discuss revenue neutral tonight. Some of you people are too young to understand what happened in the 80s. People that had money had money. People that didn't have money lost everything. They lost their homes. They lost their savings. They lost their livelihoods. I don't know if you guys understand what it means to have a CD drawing 13% interest, 14% interest, and home mortgage rates at 9, 10, 12, 13%. This is real, and it's coming. If we don't get spending under control, we're going to have some big issues. YouTube cannot dictate the First Amendment. Can we all agree on that? YouTube cannot dictate the First Amendment. The First Amendment was dictated by our founding fathers, and it's up to us to follow it. I'm going to go ahead and let you have your two minutes back. Is there anybody else here for general public comment? Jill, do we see anybody with a raised hand on Zoom? Okay, thanks for checking. Okay, with that, we will close general public comment. This is Commissioner Patil. Can we please make a comment about the First Amendment discussion and our YouTube discussion? I just think it's important because we did mention YouTube. The First Amendment only says that the government cannot abridge speech. YouTube is a company. So YouTube can have the policies that YouTube has. We are going to do everything we can to make sure that our meetings are as accessible as possible. But when YouTube flags things, they are a private company, not the government. So private companies do not have to adhere to the same First Amendment restrictions that governments do. I appreciate those comments uh, and clarification. Uh, with that, we'll move on to the regular agenda, which it begins with a review of our 2023 operating budget. Take it away, Cam. Good evening, Commissioners. Cami Owens, Douglas County Budget Manager. Um, what you have in this uh, item is just a general review of the deliberations that you made last week and um, an explanation of next steps for the budget process. So no later than July 20th of each budget year, which is today, um, each taxing subdivision has to notify the county clerk of their intent to exceed or not exceed the revenue neutral rate. I have tentatively let them know just to be a good partner in the building, um, at, depending on your motion here tonight, we'll make sure that that follows your direction. Um, but with the uh, deliberations and the budget decision worksheet that is attached, um, it does exceed the revenue neutral rate, does reduce the mill um, by one mill. And uh, the next step is to publish the 2023 budget so that we can have a hearing notice. Great, thank you for that overview. Any questions for Cami from either commissioner? Okay, I don't have any questions either. So with that, we'll go ahead and open this up for public comment. Um, if there's anybody that would like to provide public comment about this, you can go ahead and come forward. The microphone is already unmuted for you. Hello, my name is Joel Campbell. I'm a resident of Lawrence and a member of the Sunrise Movement. Um, I just wanted to come here today to talk to you guys about, um, or I, I wanted to um, encourage you guys to revoke funding for the Wakarusa extension. You may have heard of this project a little bit in the past. It was brought up in a few uh, past city commission meetings. It is a basically an extension of the South Lawrence traffic way that goes south just a little bit. It's close to the um, uh, the Rotary Arboretum area. Um, this area or this extension would go outside of the area that city commission has voted as like the area that we will allow development past. Uh, multiple times in the past. This has actually been a project that has been proposed for almost 40 years now, I think over 40 years at this point, um, and has had a lot of uh, backlash in the past um, for just a lot of things that I that I will get into um, a little bit. Um, so it's not very popular, and uh, I'm, I'm concerned that it's continuing to be funded. 
uh, because the funding, I've heard a bunch of different numbers from different places. Uh, I don't know the exact number. I've heard anywhere from seven to 14 million, and I've also heard 10 million. Um, this is a lot of money for a road that goes nowhere. In, in theory, this road would eventually lead to development of a bridge across the Wakarusa River, which is a whole other problem um, that my other member of the Sunrise Movement will talk about a little bit more, but I wanted to talk about the idea of the growth Ponzi scheme, which is the idea um, that we're starting to see a little bit more as we are a couple of generations out from the initial uh, suburban experiment in the 60s, where they would build very sprawling uh, infrastructure. And then because that infrastructure costs so much money to, uh, to maintain, the, the initial benefit of fast cash from suburban infrastructure um, is vastly um, negated or uh, overwhelmed by the cost that it takes to maintain this infrastructure. So for us to extend a road that goes nowhere for a little bit of money and potentially a bridge that would go across the Wakarusa River and cause more problems, I, I have a lot of I have a lot of problems with that, especially when we should be limiting urban sprawl as much as we can because growth, while it is good in the short term, it costs a lot of money in the long term. And I have a lot of concerns with that, especially as we're running into budgetary issues for the reason of spending hundreds of millions of dollars every year on maintaining roads and things like that, maintaining roads and sewer systems that are the product of urban sprawl. So I just kind of wanted to bring that to you guys' attention and uh, hopefully we can see some action on that. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Maddie Bell. I'm also a resident of Lawrence. Uh, so yeah, talking about the Wakarusa extension, um, the road that, so it's a road to nowhere and it opens the door for an extension over the Wakarusa River to County Road 458. Um, and there are a number of reasons why this would be environmentally uh, disruptive. Um, the Wakarusa River, if you look at it, is a river that snakes a lot. So any bridge construction over it would be costly. It would have to be a large bridge. That construction construction itself would pollute the river in the surrounding area, which is a wetland. Um, and then runoff from the bridge from cars going over it would also create pollution. Um, it would increase the rate of animal animal vehicle collisions because it's a wildlife highway from the from Clinton Lake to the Baker Wetlands. Um, and uh it also interacts with the Haskell Indian Nations University agreement regarding that land, which the initial of the initial, initial building of the South Lawrence traffic way violated, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, we're just asking to not fund that. This I recognize this might be too late in the process, um, but since the city said that they won't fund it because it's outside of city limits, um, it'd be really great if you didn't fund it too. Save you a lot of money, won't destroy. Uh, natural land that's pretty untouched um, and will save lives. Thank you. Is there anybody else that has public comment about this budget item? Okay, seeing nobody else here, we'll double check if anybody's got a raised hand online. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close that um, for, and bring it back for discussion amongst commissioners. Um, I appreciate you. I uh, appreciate the public comments that we received. I want to clarify um, a couple of quick things. Um, one is that part of our budget deliberations um, included, always includes um, our capital improvement projects. That is a line item. Um, the discussion that the commission had this year about that um, was pretty limited because we are waiting until fall to have a larger presentation about the specific um, projects that are lined up in that 2023 kind of pipeline for the capital improvement projects. I'm seeing head nods from Cami, so and feel free to jump in if you think there's anything to add to that. But I just want to clarify that um, <clears throat> that is a uh, an overall budget line item. Specific projects will be discussed, of course, during our public meetings, and there will be a process to that. Um, and then. Uh, I think that there is a lot of information um, and discussion and perspectives about the um, these capital improvement projects specific specifically that we heard comments about tonight um, that we can spend more time talking about that's not on our agenda tonight so I don't want to dig into that too much um, but there will be future opportunity we also had a meeting 
I don't have the date in front of me, um, but can certainly plan to follow up with Sunrise Movement members if they haven't already seen it, where um, we did have a presentation about um, the, from Chad Boyd, our public works director, um, earlier this summer that provided some specific historical information. Um, and then the last thing that I wanna address specifically about it is, um, I want to caution around the language road to nowhere because people live there. Um, and there are a lot of reasons um, that residents who live in that part of that Southern area of Douglas County, um, south of the Wakarusa River, um, there are a lot of valid reasons for wanting this extension. And those are um, issues that we have to take into consideration in addition to the environmental impacts um, and other concerns that are raised. But I think that Road to Nowhere um, could be misconstrued or, or found to be um, upsetting for people who, who live there for where that road would provide a connection point um, and transportation for them. So I just wanted to, I've had that discussion with a few people in one-on-one -on -one conversations in recent weeks and want to take the opportunity to address that as part of this conversation since we received public comment. Um, with that, is there any other discussion about this agenda item or public comments we received before moving towards a motion? Make a motion uh, to notify the county clerk to exceed the established revenue neutral rate and publish the 2023 budget and the R&R &R hearing notice. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thanks, Cami, for being here. Thanks for all your work. Okay, with that, we will move on to our next regular agenda item, which is a presentation from the planning department. Are they with us on, looks like online? We'll turn it over to you, Becky. Thank you very much and good evening, commissioners. Um, my name is Becky Pepper, the planning manager, and I'm filling in for uh, Mary's Big Shoes here tonight. Uh, she was unable to uh, join us. Um, the item before you tonight is to consider accepting vacation of an easement, a utility easement that's associated with a minor subdivision application for the Twin Ridge Heights subdivision number two, which is located at 1945 East 845 Road. Now, subdivision, uh, minor subdivision ap uh, applications are administratively reviewed and approved. Um, however, the dedication or vacation of easements or right-of-way are brought to the Board of County Commissioners for acceptance. This minor subdivision proposes the combination of three lots that are under common ownership into one lot uh, in order to remove the interior setbacks associated with each of those um, existing individual lots. And you can see this um, in a graphic in figure one of the staff memo that's been provided in your packet. Uh, the property is zoned CP, Cluster Preservation District, and it's developed with detached dwelling and also contains some woodlands. The areas to the east, west, and south are also zoned CP district, and they're developed similarly. And then the area to the north is zoned AG1, Agricultural District, and contains woodlands. And then the area to the northeast is zoned AG2, which is a Transitional Agricultural District. And those are areas developed with detached dwellings and agricultural uses. And um, you can find maps of the surrounding zonings and land uses in the um, attached administrative determination staff report that's been provided in your packet. Uh, those are figures 2A and 2B. Um, as part of the minor subdivision, the owner uh, proposes to vacate a 30 foot wide utility easement that runs through the property, the general location of which uh, is shown back in figure one of your staff memo, and it's that area that's outlined with the dotted white line. Minor subdivisions and vacation requests uh, are provided to utility companies um, that serve those applicable areas during the review period, and in this case, Rural Water uh, District 6 uh, was included in that review, and they noted concerns with vacation of the proposed easement. Um, as stated in the memo, the district board uh, discussed the variance request and stated, quote, the board motion to keep the existing easement, which allows the water district to extend the water lines to other parcels, citing concerns of setting precedent, cost to circumvent other parcels, and the impact of potential revenue for the district. 
The water district's main, the water main is located within the right of way of East 845 Road, and it ends at the end of that cul-de-sac adjacent to the, the property. Figure two of the staff memo shows the minor subdivision drawing and the subject easement that extends from that cul-de-sac. The applicant noted that no utilities were found in the easement by Dig, uh, Dig Safe, um, but has stated the existing easement would allow for the water main to be extended uh, in the future if needed. So tonight, uh, the uh, Board of County Commissioners may uh, either accept the vacation of the easement uh, or vote not to accept. If the easement is vacated, then uh, later if the need arises, uh, it will be necessary for the rural, rural water district to acquire the easement again and uh, bring it back to the governing body for dedication at that time. Um, or if the easement is not vacated and is uh, maintained, then the applicant will uh, need to submit a revised plat drawing that includes that easement. Um, and that has been noted as a condition of approval uh, on that administrative determination report. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, we have any members from the Rural Water District or the um, applicant here in attendance tonight, but uh, if not, I'm happy to um, help answer any questions that you might have. With that, that's all I have for you. Great. Thank you, Becky. <clears throat> Are you the applicant or with the Water District? Yes. If you can just make sure you uh, mention your name and Douglas County residents for the minutes. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jeanette Funk, and I'm with Rural Water District 6. I'm the clerk. I apologize, none of the board members could make it tonight. However, I can take any questions you may have for them back or try to answer them for you. Great. Thank you for being here. Um, do, uh, does, either question, does either commissioner have any questions for Becky or applicant? Or the, oh, I guess, do we have the applicant online? Sorry, I should double check that, Jill. Um, see a few folks. Those look like just attendees. It doesn't look like we have them here. Okay. Any questions from commissioners from the Rural Water District or Becky? Sorry, the applicant's not here because I have a question for the applicant. But Becky, do you know how long the property owners have owned this property? I don't. I'm sorry. I do not not know that. I can try to find that out, but I'm not sure how successful I would be in this in this short in this meeting, but it's something we could definitely get bring back. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? Okay, with that, I'll go ahead and open this up for public comment. I don't believe we have anybody here with us for public comment. Has anybody raised their hand online, Jill? Okay, we'll close public comment and bring this back for discussion. Um, any thoughts or comments from other commissioners? Commissioner Kelly, do you want to expound on your question at all, despite the applicant's absence? Yeah, so I mean, part of this is really an interesting one to me because I'm assuming the applicant bought the property knowing that that easement was there and that the property when it was platted was specifically platted with this easement along that, that line. And so I was just interested to understand, you know, how things have changed, sort of what the history is, what they plan to do. Um, and without the applicant here, we can't really hear that. So I, that's what I was hoping to understand is just a little bit of the history of the property. Is there, you know, it's nice to have the applicant here because we could talk about, is there another easement that would work better for the way that they're using it and still meet the water district's needs, but, but we don't have that in this case. Yeah, well, I appreciate you expanding on that. I think that, um, would have been some good context to understand. Um, but I think given the presentation um, and the concerns of the Rural Water District, um, that it makes sense to follow the staff recommendation to uh, not grant the request at this time. Um, I can go ahead and make a motion. Um, it's Commissioner Reed, I move to, well, I'm trying to think what the motion will be exactly to uh, deny motion to deny the vacation of a utility easement, uh, easement associated with minor subdivision MS 2200131 for Twin Ridge Heights subdivision number two located at 1945 East 845 Road. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I'm out of practice making motions. <laughs> I'm getting a tongue twisted. Thank, Thank you for you being here. We appreciate it. <clears throat> Thank you, Becky. Have a good evening. 
Okay, and that concludes our regular agenda. With that, we'll move on to appointments, which I believe we're ready for a couple of planning commission seats to be filled. So I'll start with um, Steve Munch. Uh, I've visited with Steve, and this is for the Lawrence Douglas County Metropolitan Planning Commission. Steve certainly has an interest. He's a lawyer by background. He lives within the city limits, but I think really understands and is um, interested in learning more about um, Douglas County as a whole and, and thinking about that. And I think we have to remember sometimes we hear, got to make sure all our appointments are um, in the unincorporated area, but our appointments include um, also municipalities as well as within Douglas County. So um, I think Steve will do a great job. He's watched meetings, he's read the packet, um, really has a, a good sense of how to go through the process, um, relying on some of the technical factors and, and, and as well as um, listening to the public that comes and speaks at planning commission. So I'd like to make the recommendation to point Steve Munch to Lawrence Douglas County Metropolitan Planning Commission. Second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Aye. Thank you. And my second recommendation is Chelsea Hayden. Chelsea Hayden is a rural resident. She lives out in Grant Township. Um, Chelsea is at the University of Kansas as well in the School of Law, I believe. Um, and um, maybe not, Mr. Report too. Now she's oh, at the University. Right. Yeah, I think she was she at was. the University of Kansas. So um, again, I, I do think it's it's helpful. We certainly don't want a whole planning commission full of lawyers, but sometimes it's helpful for those with law backgrounds because there is some. Um, quasi-judicial proceedings that happen on planning commission. I also appreciated uh, Chelsea's understanding of rural issues and um, her, her attention to detail when looking at, at planning commission issues. I think she'll make a great planning commission. So with that, I'll make a motion uh, to appoint Chelsea Hayden as to the Lawrence Douglas County Metropolitan Planning Commission. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, thank you so much for your due diligence and following up with folks. Thank you. Any other appointments to discuss for this evening? Okay, uh, this week we don't have County Administrator Sarah Plinsky with us, so I, we don't have a weekly memo to discuss, but I, that I see, maybe I'm just missing it. Um, Jill, you do you have updates? You should have gotten one and I okay. apologize that you didn't. Um, no, we'll maybe I just didn't refresh. Apologies. Yeah, you should have gotten one. We'll we'll get it to you um, later tonight or tomorrow. It's there. Oh, it's there. Sweet. All right. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay. Anything else to highlight? Um. Uh, I think the the most timely one is um the uh the picnic that is going to occur in South Park immediately after our meeting next week, or <laughs> it'll, it'll start during the meeting maybe depending on what the agenda looks like, but um. Um, I know that county staff has been involved in um, supporting that event, and um, I think that's the most one of the one of the more timely ones. But there's a lot of events that are coming up as well. So if commissioners plan to be at any of those, just let us know so we can make sure we update calendars. Great, thanks. Any miscellaneous items or updates from other commissioners? think so we have the fair coming up so we will all be there for pie tasting at the fair i think we noticed that so i hope folks go out to the douglas county fair and, and have a good time thanks for our fair board for putting that on yes i've been seeing lots of posts that 4-h events are well underway and the extension office is fielding lots of questions about the carnival um and other <laughs> events next week so i hope it's good good enough weather um and a fun time Okay, with no other items on the agenda, we are adjourned. Have a good night, everybody.